Hey guys, this is Mr. Cutler here, and I wanted to go over a quick uh, overview of your ramp forces and motion simulation. So if you want to open up the simulation, and you will be working out of the introduction tab, and you'll notice that you'll have a few different options of objects to use. Uh, so just play around with some of these options over here, and your assignment will actually be involving this mystery object, but we'll get to that later. So first off, let's look at the small crate. And what you'll notice is there's a small crate, and I can make a man apply a force to the crate, but the crate's not moving, and that's because there's the uh, force of friction acting on it. So what is the maximum value that that force of friction could be? Well, in order to know what that maximum value is, I would have to look at the kinetic, sorry, the static coefficient of friction and multiply that by the normal force. So luckily for the crate, it gives me the mass, which I can then multiply by 9.8 in order to get the normal force. And it gives me the coefficient of static friction, which is 0 0.5. So I can multiply those together and I end up getting 490. And that would be my value for the maximum amount of uh, friction that this box could have in a static state. Otherwise, any amount after that, the box will be moving. Uh, so, as I apply a force, I think that value is about 490. So what I'll do is I'll just plug it right in here and I'll just start with, let's say, 488. I'll hit enter and you'll notice the box is not moving. I'll enter in 489. The box is not moving. I'll move in 490. So now this is exactly equal to the force of friction. And it's not moving again. That kind of makes sense because it's a perfectly balanced uh, situation right now. But let's see if I can get 491, if I can get that box to start moving. So there it goes. At 491, the box started to move. And you'll notice that the applied force became greater than the force of friction. So it started to accelerate. So, uh, I'll try doing something else now. I'm going to eliminate that applied force, and I'm going to start to lift this wall and start getting an angle. And another one thing that I could do now is start to look at how the uh, how the force of friction is increasing as it goes up and up and up and up and up. That's because there's a force pulling the box down. That force is gravity. And the higher that this ramp gets, the larger the incline, the greater this force of gravity becomes. Okay, We're going to call this the force of gravity in the parallel. So uh, this value is equal to the force of friction as we go along. So right now this force of friction is equal to the force of gravity because this gravity that's pulling the box down is what's creating this uh, frictional force in the opposite direction. So I could simply lift this box up until it starts to move and I did this earlier and I got it to be about 26 degrees. So I'm going to go up here and just type in 25.9 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to slowly start to lift up the box and increase that angle. I'm going to pause the simulation as I go down. So I've got the angle at about 26.8 degrees and the box is falling down this way. So what I could do with that is calculate what the force of gravity in this direction would be at 20. 6.8 degrees, and that'd actually be really simple because I know what Fg is. Fg would simply be the mass of the crate times the uh, times 9.8 meters per second squared, and then I'd end up getting Fg in this arrow. So how would I find what Fg parallel would be? Well, that would just be simple trigonometry. So since I know this angle here, 
and I know this value to the triangle here, it's easy to calculate what this value would be for the force of gravity. Now that's easy to do because I'm given the mass and I'm given the coefficients of friction. Well, let's change it up now a little bit and look at the mystery object. Well, with the mystery object, I'm not given mass or coefficient of friction, either in static or kinetic. So what could I do here? Well, I can get my man to start pushing this crate. And as he starts to push the crate, I can notice the crate moving so I can find out what the maximum force of friction in the static direction could be. But I don't know its mass and I don't know what the coefficient is. And that information doesn't help. So I need to figure some way out to find either the coefficient for static friction or the mass of this box without having any other information. So the way to do it is actually to put it up on a ramp. And I'm going to show you how to do this now, but I'll show you how to do it with the small crate. And then once I show you how to do it with the small crate, try and apply this same principle back to the mystery object. So I'm going to get the crate on the ramp, and I'm going to start to lift it. And I think I told you before that I put it up to 26 degrees. I believe it was 26 degrees, and it did not start to fall down. So I found that this was the maximum angle. So what I ended up finding was that Fg in the parallel was equal to the force of friction at about 26 degrees. And as soon as I went higher than 26, then the force of gravity in the parallel became greater than the force of friction. So the maximum amount at which this was equal was at 26 degrees. So what I did was I set these two uh, variables equal to each other and flushed out the equation for the force of gravity in the parallel, which in this case would have been the normal force, or, uh, sorry, yes, the normal force times sine of 26 degrees, which is equal to the normal force times the cosine of 26 degrees times the coefficient of static friction for the force of friction. So what I could then do is cancel out the normal force because the normal force is the same on both sides of the equation. So they cancel out and I'm simply left with a value for my coefficient of, uh, my coefficient of static friction. And that would be sine of 26 degrees divided by cosine of 26 degrees. And I flushed that out and got a value of 4.9. Now it's not perfect. Oh, sorry, that, that value was, should have been 0 0.49. So it's not perfect. It was close to the value of 0 0.5, but not exact. So probably when I lifted up this box, it wasn't a perfect value. But you could see that I was able to calculate the coefficient of static friction of this small crate without knowing its mass. So now go and apply that same principle to the mystery object. Try and find out what that maximum angle is, and then find out the coefficient of static friction for the mystery box. Once you have that done, you should be, go, you should be able to, to push this box and find out what force you can use in order to push this box to know what its maximum force of friction is, you would know what its coefficient of static friction is, so you should be able to then find out Fn. And if you could find out Fn, you should be able to find out the mass of the mystery object. I hope this helped, and if you have any questions, uh, please post them in the discussion board.